man, we are live. Holy hell. I'm with Adam Bailey, man. Dude, I've been waiting for this one for a long time, brother. How are you? Hang on, brother. Oh, man, that we have that big, exciting entrance, bro, and I can't hear you again. You shut YouTube down? Hang on just a sec, brother. Check your audio and let me know if you can get back to me. Dude, I love these tech difficulties. We may have to have you log off and log on again, dude. I don't know how many times we'll have to do it, but we want to get you on, brother. We got to get you on here. Let me ask the audience real quick. Can anyone hear me or can anyone hear Adam? If you can't comment. Comment over on the side if you can hear myself or Adam, because I can't hear Adam, but Adam can hear me. Okay, Adam, I got Matt Smith saying he can hear me, but not you, brother. Let try that. Try that thing. I don't know if, what you did uh, with uh, with YouTube, shutting off YouTube. Let Let's see if we can get you on and off again, or 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 get you logged back in. But we'll we'll, we'll get it solved. We, we can't, we have never been held out by tech tech difficulties, man. We never have. So Adam, I'll have you uh, log off and get back in and everybody just hang tight with me and we will make sure we get Adam back on. Here he comes. Here he comes. So hopefully this works. This worked last time. Oh, here we go. Oh no. All right, man. What's I don't know how you're going to do that, today? bro. <laughs> What's up? All right. We got audio, uh, man. Yeah, we are. We are definitely live this time, man. Um, no, dude, I, I'm si I'm excited, yeah. brother. Listen, I'm, I'm glad we had an opportunity to connect. I've been, uh, you know, obviously, I've followed you for a long time on social media, and I don't think we've ever had a chance mm -hmm. to sit down um, like this and, and have a conversation. So I'm really excited, man. I, I appreciate you having me on. I, I don't do a lot of these uh, interviews, uh, so I'm looking forward. Uh, to breaking whatever we need to break down, getting vulnerable and getting after it today. So I'm honored that uh, you invited me on. I, I know you're having, have had a lot of other uh, powerful EXP people on. So I was like, let's do it. So I'm going to help you out with your show. Hell yeah, brother. Appreciate it, man. Well, just real quick. And yeah. I told you this in the pre-interview that I don't spend a lot of time on, you know, uh, on how long you've been in real estate, how you got into real estate. So I'll right. just ask you just a brief right. couple questions to set the stage. So how long have right. you been in real estate? Eight years. Okay, so you've been in the in the game for eight years, and and how did yeah. you actually end up getting into real estate? All right, so um, yeah, it's it all started back in 2010, or actually in 2009, I sold my insurance agency uh, with Aflac, cashed out all my stocks. The market was horrible. Uh, I just took a year, and I was really in a pivoting stage of my life. I was like 26, 27, didn't know what I was wanting to do, and then I had a guy by the name of Gerbic that kept trying to pitch me on. Uh, working with his brokerage and team. There was like five or six people. He had just started this brokerage the year before and I had a lot of ego. Why wouldn't I just do it on my own? I kept meeting with him. So I came in as a consultant for like six months and um, IDX feeds were just coming out. We were working on marketing and I was like, man, there's a huge opportunity here to build a call center um, because everybody was just staring at the phone waiting for it to ring. And so I was like, if we could generate thousands of internet leads and create a predictable business, we're on to something. And so I came in, I was making, I started working as an ISA, making 300 bucks a week. Um, and I did that for like six months just to see if there was a market there. Uh, saw the vision with the team model back then in 2010. Uh, the ISAs, everybody was telling us you couldn't build call centers and build teams back then. What's trending today? Teams and call centers. Right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I'm hoping that uh, the new pivot move that I'm making currently um, is the new future. And, and I believe so um, with the networks and stuff like that. So tell yeah, brother, that's awesome, man. Yeah. You, I know you were because like I, when I got in uh, back in like 2014 um, and, and I started following you guys and um, certainly you were at the forefront of that whole ISA movement when that came forward and, and it was a, right. it was a way to build predictable revenue and it, it, it works right. um, even still today. So yeah, I mean, we can talk definitely a little bit about that. Uh, I, I think that's I think that's great that you 
you know, you came from a sales industry. In other words, you you were out hustling in the insurance business, so that really didn't change. But <laughs> right. it sounds like you like you like you kind of you you humbled yourself a little bit because you had this insurance business, and then you were working as an ISA mm -hmm. for three hundred bucks a week. Uh, I mean, without a doubt, I wasn't chasing money. I was chasing opportunity. Um, and it wasn't about the short term money. It was about the long term impact on what we could build. Right. My, you know, when I started building my insurance agency at 22 with Affleck, I only made eleven thousand dollars that year. I was 22 buy, going and buying dress clothes at the Salvation Army, rolling around at 89 Buick, going blowing into businesses, trying to sell uh, uh, supplemental insurance. And so I was swimming with the sharks for sure. When I when I jumped into real estate, um, I, I was just basically looking for an opportunity and, and to have an impact and build something that uh, would, would last longer than just a 1099 for that year. And so, yeah, I did humble myself. I went back. I was 26, 27, 27 at the time. And I went and did the hard work, um, started calling expired FISBOs. I was generating um, appointments for uh, a, a couple of people that ended up becoming owners in that same company as myself a couple of years later and really built the foundation and made it predictable. And that's how I was able to coach, train, hold other people accountable because I was in the trenches and it definitely exploded to ownership and then me running the company and open expansion offices. And people were like, wow, you've done a lot for only being in real estate for eight years. But I've done the hard work and then I replace myself, move on to the name, get it built, get it predictable and then turn it over to somebody else and move on to something else to make it sellable. Yeah, dude, that's awesome, man. And, and, and I, you know, the great thing about like for me, for instance, like I came out of an industry where we were selling copiers like and I did that from 2009 to 2000. Um, uh, uh, 14 or, or 2000, yeah, mm -hmm. May of 2014. But li listen, I mean, I learned a lot because I was selling a commodity. Insurance is a commodity, right? I mean, so you have to do mm -hmm. something to, to differentiate yourself. And it sounds like you did. So you, you probably took a yeah. lot from that experience in the insurance world and were able to use that uh, then in real estate. Here, here, one quick story. Here's how I learned follow up in insurance. So I was 27 years old. I'm sitting in this office of like 30, 40 employees. And the guy's like, how did you even get in front of me? He's like, you're young. You haven't been in the business that long. And can I be honest with you? And I was like, yeah. I was like, and he's like, you're not going to be in business in a year from now. And he's like, there's so much turnover. There's, you know, 80, 90% fell rate and in insurance. And it just took the wind out of my cells almost. But he said, here's what I'll do for you. If you follow up with me in my next open enrollment one year from now, and you're on time, I will give you my business if you're still in business full time. I called him. A year to that date, and I just made eleven thousand dollars my first year eating Roman noodles. My wife's going to college full time. She's like, "Just go get another job." I'm like, "I'm." I, was, I dropped out of college for this opportunity. I was like, "Pig-headed." I was just gonna make it work. And I call, called him that day, uh, the day before uh, we had scheduled. He let me back in, and he was like, "Holy crap!" And he gave me his account. And then it just changed my life. But what I figured out was I was covering a couple of states and I could get in front of rainmakers. I just didn't have the skill set, the talent or the life experience to be able to get them to trust me to take action towards me. So this is the first experience of like building a team that I experienced in insurance. I started all the big dogs are just you know sitting around drinking coffee, living off their residual income, all that stuff. I'm like, hey, I can I have an appointment with this 70 man, whatever manufacturer office, can you go in there and pitch the guy? If you close it, let's split the business 50, 50. And so I was getting us in the door, you know, using, you know, telemarketing and building scripts and, and you know, understanding pain points and getting past gatekeepers. And so they were closing business. We're splitting a 50, 50. And then it took off uh, until the market crashed 08, 09. And then I had to make some adjustments or changes. Cause I was like, this isn't what I want to be doing five years from now. Yep. Chet Holmes, man. Pig headed <laughs> discipline. I love it. I love it, man. So, so talk to me about like, um, talk to me about your dollar volume last year. Like how many, how many homes did you guys, your, your, your group actually sell? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, that's a great question. So, uh, I've, I've sold 6,000 houses with the team in seven years. And so yep. last year, uh, I mean, we're in between a thousand to 1100, before I sold my equity piece to be able to build a modern team uh, outside of the old team. You know, we've been ranked ninth to 12th in the nation. And one of those spots from like 2012 to like 2017, I sold last October my equity piece or, um, you know, just pretty much bought myself out to, to take a shot at this because I believe in it. 
Um, and so, yeah, I mean, you know, we were, you know, we were an average sales price of 150,000. Okay. So, um, you know, we had to, to do 150 million, we had to be selling over a thousand homes. So we had to build that machine and that processing plant to have the lifestyle that we wanted because there was three other partners that also made that tick other than myself. Um, and so we had great talent. So, yeah. It, it I, and I always tell experience. people, cause I had, I had Kyle Whistle and Dan Beer on here and, and they, right. those, guys, those guys, when it comes to dollar volume are the exception and not the rule. Um, right, right. So, 200 so, homes, right? Yeah. <laughs> that I can do a thousand. Like, give me a break, man. Like, and, and, and really this is one of my epiphanies with moving over to EXP because uh, the way that we were um, expanding, it was one office, proven concept, sucking up profits. But if I could take this model and apply it on a national scale, I could change people's lives. And I could scale it a lot quicker if we, if I got outside of the old model, gave up the words and the rankings and just focus more on helping other people achieve what they want. And in return, I'll get what I want, which is financial freedom, not, not to be tied down like I, I, I was before. So. Yep. And so, all right. So don't give away the secret yet. Cause I definitely want to get into your transition. Um, tell me how, right. tell me how your business is structured as you sit in that chair today. What is your, what is your, what does your business look like? Your team, like, how are you structured right now? I'm so damn happy, man, right now. Like, you know, running the team that we were running it before was high stress, uh, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars. We're, you know, doing 150 million, you know, our GCI is over four, right? What are your margins on that after you pay your staff, call center, agents, marketing costs, all that. And, you know, two of us didn't work in the field, two of us owners. And so it's kind of like, um, it, it just was highly stressful. And so when I looked at the expansion, I've been trying to expand. I was expanding over the last four years. That's been my primary focus. EXP didn't come to me. I went to EXP because I was knocking on doors. Where's the software? Where's the technology? Where's the easier way to be transactional expansion? Where's What's the easiest way to um, uh, be transactional with tracking and everything? And so EXP kept coming up and it took me a year and a half to get my mind wrapped around EXP as an independent egos in the way, you know, giving up a little bit on the front end to make more on the back end. And so the way it's structured today is I stay in high leverage situations. I'm no longer dealing with low level um, um, things, if you will. And so I'm working with more uh, partners, like minded people like myself that I've attracted and building a tribe. And so, uh, you know, we're helping them build their team, build their network, find their partners, and we're ratcheting it up and scaling uh, up from there. I was able to take half the summer off this summer. Uh, revenue kept coming in. I just kept myself uh, in high leverage situations where I'm helping them run meetings virtual or traveling to their city um, and, and stuff like that. So it's, uh, it's a lot better uh, when you can work with like minded people versus trying to push a donkey up the hill with the agent that you're just trying to make money off of, but you're not, uh, you're not committed long term to them and vice versa, you know, so. Right, right. And so, um, so talk about like, you, you said that EXP didn't come to you, you went to them, but I want what I really want to, to talk about, and, and hopefully that you can help our audience see is that there was this point when, you know, you heard about EXP and you're like, mm -hmm. You're like everybody else who's heard about it. Either they heard about it and they were curious, or they heard about it and 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 right. and they didn't they didn't like the idea, right. or they heard about it right. and they were scared. Where where, right. where were you at? Right, right. So it takes a leader to lead a leader. Okay, uh, people fear or always say no to things that they don't understand. So I saw EXP just on the surface. The technology that I was looking for on the expansion side is called enterprise. Nobody ever told me about enterprise and the tracking. All I heard was. Rev share. No one ever broke Rev share down to me. All I heard was KB Core and all this other stuff. And I was running Boomtown at a high level. So I have a lot of partners running Boomtown that's running big teams. Um, you know, we have teams that uh, partnered with me with the XP doing over 500 units. And so we just have to do what works best for us. And what I did, I picked up the phone when I saw other people moving that I respected. Um, and I would call them, what am I missing? And, and some people would explain it different than than other people. And, and, and so it took, uh, it probably took a year and a half and probably seven, eight conversations from other leaders in the industry that I respect to get their angle on it, um, to be able to articulate it and break it down. It has been under my nose the whole time. Like I wish I would have moved, I mean, two years ago. I mean, I looked at this, I looked at this company when they first had 1200 people, I joined and went live 
uh, when they had 5,500 agents. And I think we just broke over 14,000. Yeah, I think we're close to 15 now, brother. I think we're close to 15. 15 dogs, yeah. It's just booming. Yep. And so, you know, the funny, the funny thing is that, you know, when you said that, it's yeah. like, uh, I, I mean, I wish I would have heard about it, um, you know, two years, three years ago, like when, uh, when we talked to right. Gove and all those guys, uh, I mean, when they got into it and, you know, they're reaping the benefit uh, of getting in early, but like, there's still so much opportunity left. And I actually sat down with a girl yesterday who came in, who works at another brokerage. And, uh, you know, I, I said, it's really more than just working at, it's, it's really more than just being a part of the day-to-day -day grind at your, your local mom and pop or your Cobalt Banker or your Keller mm -hmm. Williams. There's, it's that what you have to do is put all that aside and then see the opportunity for what it is. And at 15,000 agents mm -hmm. per se, I mean, look, we look at Keller Williams, right? And there's 170 something thousand agents. And we, what we see as business owners and as leaders mm -hmm. is we see a better model than what Keller Williams has. So where can this go? I mean, at 170,000 agents for KW and we're at 15,000, how much opportunity is that? Yeah. You know, uh, hold on. I have my dog here with me. Hold on. Hold on. This is live, baby. Hold on. Hey, so, we don't, yeah, hey, we yeah, don't yeah, hold yeah. any punches, so, man. We bring the dogs in. Keep, I keep, keep the dog at the office with me. Um, uh, here, here's, here's the thing. I like what Gene Frederick says. He, he, he says the best. Lulu. So Gene, Dream, uh, Gene Frederick says it best. So you can't put EXP and compare it to all those other companies. It's just a totally different model. You have to put all them other companies in their own little bucket. And the only company that has this type of model right now is EXP. And until somebody comes out with a model like EXP, there's no comparison. It's a totally different model, totally different structure. That's right, and, man. And so when people try to get me to compare it, you can't compare it. I couldn't even compare it. The only thing I could compare it to as an independent um, was giving giving up just that CEO mentality, giving up some some control, right? But the good part is, is I have ownership in this company now. I have uh, a bunch of stock. I have a partner. She's she was the number one team out of the number one market center uh, in the world, and now she has over just five months with me, one hundred and forty thousand uh, dollars worth of stock, right? So she has ownership and she's vested in this comp company, just like myself. Dude, that's crazy, man. That's crazy. So, t okay. So you said you, when you heard from the time you heard about it till the time you moved, actually was about a year and a half. Talk about talk about what happened yeah. in that year and a half. I had to do some soul searching and I had to make some decisions. Um, so I kept looking at it and I kept saying, no, no, not a fit. And I kept picking up the phone, calling respectable people. And, um, and, and it started becoming more clear once I understood the financial model that if I was able to give up some control and focus on a new way of scaling and help more people achieve what I've been able to do over the years, I, I would be able to change their lives, change my lives and all that stuff. And I was watching like one of Gene Frederick's um, webinars. It was like the fifth time of me watching it. And the whole blockbuster <laughs> Netflix thing, I think that stuff is really overused. But almost a year and a half ago when I was laying in bed with my wife, it was like, uh, it was like midnight, she's sleeping. And it just clicked with me when I was doing the math. And I, I really understood it like a light bulb went off. And I woke, I woke my, shook my wife and I said, Hey, if um, Netflix was coming, would you want to own a blockbuster? She said, No, what, what the hell is your problem? Why are you waking me up? I said, Okay, that's all I needed to know. A week later, I went to her and said, Hey, I think that, um, you know, I'm going to attempt to flip my old company to EXP. And if my other partners don't want to do it because we had a, 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 one of the a majority partners just sell and, and move on. And if the other ones didn't want to do it, then I, I was going to go out on my own because I knew if I, if I structured this right and I took a good 10 year shot at this because I'm going to turn 37 in January, I could be in and out over the next 10 years, help a lot of people, help myself. And so uh, long story short, short, they didn't want to move. The equity piece of where our company was valued at for what I had was you know, uh, you know, I had two companies, Select Homes Coaching and Select Homes was around 385K. And I exchanged uh, that equity piece for $2 to buy out my national non-compete and non-solicit nationally. And then I still had a local uh, non-solicit non-compete for eight months that just expired two months ago. And then I walked away with the vision where the industry is going to be in the next three to five years, just like when we started building call centers and teams back in 2010, I believe I'm right here again and walked away with that vision, the shirt on my back 
and the reputation and the good will that I've built in the industry. And I just had this burning passion to be able to go help other people uh, solve problems in their business, whether it's expansion problems, growth problems, training problems, ISA problems, hiring problems. And so I just went out there with a radical focus to solve as many problems as I could and attract like-minded people. And within 90 days, I had 90 people in my network and it took me eight years to build an organization up over uh, uh, 80 people in eight years. So it's, um, I mean, so I risked a lot. Um, and I will tell you, my wife thought I was crazy. Everybody in town probably still thinks I'm crazy because I haven't really been tinkering here. Uh, I've been, everything I've been is out external right now and working on a strategic plan for here in town. Uh, but my wife was pretty pissed off at me probably about 90 days. And because uh, I was, I've, I've been working on the business, not in it for five years. So when one of our uh, partners took himself out of the field, he took myself out of the field, turned the majority of the operation over to myself to run it. And so she's like, your life is good. You come and go, you go out of town to see expansion teams. Um, you just sit in meetings and make decisions and do your, do your thing, you know? And she's like, I don't understand why you kill our income, exchange everything you've built for a couple of bucks and, and kill those relationships. And I said, because I believe where the industry is going to be. And I know exactly what my place is going to be with EXP if I execute. So I went to, um, I took some time off. That was October 14th of last year. I took two months off uh, to get my mind right. Cause it, this whole process took about a year um, to rip the fiber out of everything we built up with five, six people. And that, and this is, I've only been an independent and this is all I had ever known. And so I had to just shut it down, um, take some time off, get in the gym, dropped a bunch of weight, got healthy, um, just let all the stress out. And then went to Mexico to meet Brent Gove, Gene Frederick. Um, there's about 200 of us. And I took my wife with me and took a couple people with me. Uh, and then when my wife got to see Rob Flick talk on vision and um, uh, creating passive income and uh, the future that he's currently building, my wife's like, this is everything you were after since you dropped out of college at 22 with passive income and, and financial freedom and being able to, to retire early um, and, and being able to risk it. And then she just got to meet everyone and just the, the family-like atmosphere and just the like-mindedness of that culture and so she, we came back and she's like, I, I feel a lot better uh, that, that, uh, that I went and you made the right decision. But it, she was, she was, she wasn't happy with me for about 90 days. Bro, dude, there's a lot to dig into there. Okay. So uh, I'll yeah. let you take a breather for yeah. a minute. Cause I know you just, I know you yeah. just gave a lot there. So I want to unpack some of that stuff. Um, man, first of all, holy hell, dude, Woo! you got to have some balls <laughs> to freaking uh, leave the, the the outfit you did. And, and trust me, I, I know those guys. I, I know what, what you had going on there. I mean, you guys, you, you, I mean, you guys were at the top of the game, no doubt about it. I mean, when you're talking about, you know, selling a thousand homes a year, it's like that, that is the pinnacle right now for, for that most teams are chasing, you know, a lot of people can't even get to a hundred deals, talk about a thousand, but anyway, I mean, so like you had everything going for you, man. And like you really did. And it's like you, you probably got to the point to where, you know, it's like, what is the, what is my next challenge? And then and then you had that oh shit moment when when EXP came out and you were like, dude, I can't poke holes in this. It's like every time I try to poke holes in this, I can't do it. And, and it's like, I mean, you made the change, though, brother. And that, that's why I say, man, you had to have some big balls to do that because you had you literally had everything going for you, man. Here's what I believe in. I believe in uh, peripheral vision and I believe in strategy. And if you can see something before other people can see it and speed wins, and if you can execute faster than everyone else. Uh, I saw a post the other day by somebody. They're like, by the time people really figure out the truth of what's going on with EXP and get over all the hype and all the blah, 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 it's almost going to be too late for some people, you know, in the next five, seven years, because this is a gold rush. I believe that EXP is going to create more multimillionaires than any other real estate company over the next five years. And when you have that vision and you have that work ethic and you're as strategic as hell, you'll you'll get up every day without burning desire to chase that and to execute on it. Um, and, and it's all about partnerships too, man. It's like you got to be able to to be in love with who you're partnering with. And you know the way we had built was it, it was the way everybody builds. Like, oh, we're all part of the same MLS, or we're in Sedgwick County or Butler County, and we're the alphas here. 
However, EXP just blows the lid off that. And if you could work with more strategic, like-minded people, and they're like in Texas or Seattle, or I got a team up in Toronto, Canada, and it's like, we're all brothers and sisters. And I feel like I've known these people forever. It just makes getting up and going to work that much more enjoyable. And because I, you have to come from a, a servant mindset uh, it just makes that, you know, that that work that much more rewarding versus like, man, like we got to sell 20 to 30 homes again. And it's almost like, uh, do I love the people I'm doing it with? And that's the question you have to ask yourself right. or I had to ask myself. So you went, it sounds like you went and did your due diligence. And by the way, I so appreciate that you got your wife involved. I think that was, that that is an excellent thing to do. I think that, you know, when you're making a big, a life changing decision like that and you want like you want to get obviously input from the the lives that you think it's probably going to affect. And then if you can get buy-in, then you mm -hmm. have like, you're at the office like a lot of the day, but if you get, let's say you go home or you're working from your home office and you can get buy-in from your significant other, dude, that's money. That's money. So kudos to you for doing I'll, that. I'll tell you, I'll tell you my wife loves me a lot more than she did before because I'm not stressful. And um, I, I broke through the glass ceiling, like what I had, like when you're like, oh, everybody would love to be where you're at. When you're in that position and you're at the top of the charts and you're focused on expansion and trying to find technology and processes and what's next, I don't care what the name of it is. If it solves my problem and I'm going to have a breakthrough to, to help uh, the, my quality of life and everybody around me, that's. That, that's what I'm after right there. And so I feel like I had a breakthrough and we're going to have another 10 year run at this for sure. I mean, so. Hell yeah, dude. So talk, talk to me about like uh, this whole like idea. I mean, you had this non-compete, your buyout was like 385 grand, which, mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. you walked, you ended up saying, okay, I'm uh, out, release me from the non-compete. Um, I'm going to do it for $2, right? As much as you can. I know you can't talk about uh, some of the details of that probably, but as much as you can talk about like, what did you go through like emotionally to, to, to actually make this decision to move? I, I, it was probably one of the toughest things I've ever done. I mean, I, a lot of people call me risky anyways. I just make, I just hedge my bet off strategy and I play odds and math. And uh, back in my twenties, you know, I almost became a professional poker player. I did the whole, uh, you know, four screens playing 32 games and, I was on, you know, I'd go to Vegas, Orlando and other places like doing all that. And so uh, a lot of people think that what I did was risky. However, it was very calculated. But the, the toughest thing I had to get over was my ego and being an independent and more importantly, letting down like everybody that believed in me, the 80 families and everybody else that was there. Um, but I didn't want to keep everybody together for all the wrong reasons if I couldn't flip everybody to the future, right? And so when you find out that these people don't see it and you're running it and leading it, why keep building something that's broken? And and what and so for me, I was like, okay, we were 12th. And when I like psychologically went through this, we just exchanged a, a, a new equity partner, if you will. And so I said, what what what's my next goal? Like, do I want to get in the top five? For awards like because when we when I started building the team my whole thing was I want to be a have a top 10 real estate sales team and I got to ninth and then went back to 12th then went to 10th then went to 11th and then you know, just hovered right around there so it was like I've already done this what's next because and I don't want to work the same way that I've been working because running a team at the level that we were running it at is a young man and young woman's game okay and so I had to make some decisions and, and I had a lot of alcohol, many nights involved. I had a lot of stress. <laughs> I had a lot of conversations with my family members. I had a lot of conversations with uh, uh, partners that I, I, I highly respected. And this was about a year process. And so, um, but at the end of the day, you got to make the right decision uh, off of math, business and strategy, not emotions, hope, togetherness and all that stuff. And so it was, uh, it was, it was almost like a family member dying and and hope, but being able to be rebirthed with new partners and uh, new stories and new opportunities to help people grow and all that stuff. It's just been it's actually been pretty rewarding uh, after going through that stress. Like I told my wife, Econ is next. I just told her this last night. Econ is next um, uh, October or, or next month. And yep. when I left, uh, it was October 14th of last year. And I felt like I've been through so much emotionally. 
personally, but I've also, I also had a lot of blind spots just because you're getting big results and running the way you're running. Um, it, you know, going through this process has helped me grow personally um, and helped me out with some of my blind spots. And also I've got out and traveled. I've been to Mexico, Vegas twice. I've been down to Dallas three times. Like I'm getting out and seeing the world. I'm not just stuck like a wizard behind the curtain running this machine. And it's just all about trying to sell 20, 30 houses every week or 30 to 50, right? You know, depending on what the goal was. And uh, I'm really getting out here, collaborating, not in collaboration is kind of overused with, with EXP. We get to triangulate because um, we can really like bounce stuff off each other as leaders. And I can pull other people on that I've opened lines up with, like my partner doing 500 units. He can talk to the number one team down in Dallas and they're both connected to me but they're not in each other's lines and they'll take each other's calls or I've had Tierney is her name down in Dallas. She'll help my partner that runs a, a, a pretty solid team out of Birmingham, Alabama uh, to, to help him go or bring somebody in his line or help him grow his business, whether it's seller internet leads and stuff like that. Cause when, when we're building these teams now, we're, I'm not really focused with buyer leads. You know, we're building seller databases. We have whole processes and we're running listing teams uh, if you will. But w even though their revenue wasn't tied together, we're triangulating because the belief is there that we're going to keep pulling each other up and we believe in something bigger than ourselves and bigger than the money. And so at the end of the day, to answer your question, like I just had to do some soul searching. Am I in real estate to make money and just sell a bunch of homes and collect re uh, rewards? Or am I here to help change people's lives and pull people up? And so when I made that decision, I had to personally grow to be able to get in a position to execute on that. Ab, talk a little bit about like the conversation that um, when you when like you personally decided you were going to make the move, whether your business partners moved or not. Talk talk as much as you can about like when you took that conversation to them and and how that went. And and and, and, and if you can talk about why you think maybe um, why they why you think they didn't they didn't make the move and you did. Uh, here, here's what I'll say. I'll go back to ego. Ego is a hell of a thing. And one of our majority partners had just cashed out for a large sum. I mean, we're, we're a big independent when some, when there's millions of dollars on the table and we're independents, nobody can tell us anything. The problem was I was the one on the road. I'm the one, you know, delivering presentations to our agents, driving sales, working on marketing, working with the call center. And so I just was that much more entrenched in the business. And I think I had a better understanding that it was broke. And at the same time, when you got big money involved, you think money can solve problems and, and, and it can, you can throw money um, at things and it will solve problems. But I knew the problem we were up against with expansion was it, it was a multi, multi, multi million dollar tech issue. Okay. And I had, I was running a coaching company. Okay. And I have this guy named Mark Benefield running coaching. And as much as people see me pump content out there and coaching and all that, I don't like coaching. Okay. Because people come and suck as much information as they can from you. And then you're burning through contracts. And it's like, man, if I'm going to pour into you, and, and give you everything I have, like, I want a partnership. I want to be able to scale those dividends. Right. Yeah. And so I was just thinking like coaching isn't the answer. So scaling up coaching for money wasn't the answer to me. And, and, you know, throwing money at broken tech wasn't going to be the answer because I had more people that wanted to get in business with select homes and we could execute on. I was losing to other brokerages because I'm like, you're in line, you're next, or we can talk to you next. And so I had a pulse nationally and, and had uh, some good feedback off of the will that all the content and the videos, I started shooting videos five years ago. I sucked at it, but I just gave my heart and tried to just show people and screen share and just, and I was young, you know, and, and just over the years it built up. And now as I'm becoming a young leader, people are like, let's triangulate, let's figure out a way to do deals. Let's figure out a way to work together and this the model was broken from needing a broker to needing real estate to branding to hiring a, a bunch of agents to to the technology coming back to the corporate office from the expansion team accountability accounting and all that stuff and so for me um it wasn't just one thing it was just it, it just was it's like chemistry man it was just like it just all added up and then it equaled this equation where I had the answer and I could ignore it and I could have kept doing the same thing over and over again and expect different results. We probably would have ended anywhere between ninth to 15th in the nation again, 
and I'd be killing myself. However, if you make changes, you're going to get a different result. I mean, and that's what I needed to make was changes to be able to, to get to the next level. Yep. And, and for you, like now, I mean, you've built a lot of influence. Uh, you've built a lot of relationships and credibility through um, the social media stuff that you've been doing over the last five years. And, and so what's really right. cool about you is it only made logical sense for you to move uh, to EXP so you could actually start cashing in on some of those relationships and change those folks' lives is what you did. I mean, that's what you did. Uh, there's some, there's some truth. To, um, you should, you should seriously look at EXP, but you just can't be a coach and try to hop in for greed. Um, if you will, like, uh, if you're selling and you're developing people and you're building a good, healthy business and you have an influence and you know that you can execute on it, then, yeah. then cash in on it. But I think also a lot of people get into EXP or talk about it or try to, um, recruit for all of the wrong reasons. And a lot of people are like, you know, I, I'm hoping to hit, if I keep growing the same way I've been growing by the end of this year, by the end of January, I'll be in between 450, 500 agents. And I haven't picked up the phone once and tried to mm -hmm. influence somebody to get in business with me. I've like had people reach out to me and I'm genuinely interested in their business, what's going on and seeing if I could help them solve problems and make tweaks and changes for improvements through EXP and through my leadership and, and resources and, and stuff like that. And so I think if you're coming from that place of contribution and, and really helping give more, be more and pull people up through um, solving these problems, then, then it works as an influencer. But also I see some people that are influencers in this uh, game and they're in it for the wrong reasons. And I just sit back and, and shake my head. Um, and so it's, uh, I think it's a two way street. And so I think EXP just through the natural structure of this model is going to attract some greed. I mean, that's part of it because this is the gold yeah. rush. I just said, it's going to create more multimillionaires than uh, any other uh, real estate company over the next five years. So who don't want a piece of it, but here's what I, here's how I ended my speech from Vegas. You have to be able to lead yourself and prove you can build a business before you can help other people and they're willing to follow you because they're just not going to follow you for rev share. No. Nope. Yeah, that's right, man. And that's why I said, you know, you've, you've took, you took the time to build those relationships and those were authentic relationships. And when you say you didn't pick up the phone and I believe that I believe it because, you know, the reality of it is we're not picking up the phone either. And we're, we're getting people to call in who have questions, who we've built relationships with, who trust us because of the credibility mm -hmm. that we have and because of the value mm -hmm. that we've added into those mm -hmm. folks' lives. And I, I would imagine you've done something very similar to that. Yeah. Um, you know, I do think you need to reach out to people that you genuinely care about and you want to partner with, but I just wouldn't look at them as a number. I mean, going into next year, um, you know, I, I, I don't want to brag and I don't want anybody to think they can get these same type of numbers. But I launched January 12th and I've been growing about 25 percent month over month, some months around 28 percent. And if I keep growing the same exact way over the next 12 to 15 months that I've grown over the last eight months, my predictions of rev share with my operations manager and running our predictable business, the rev share will be around. 1.9 million dollars that's a, that is crazy to me and i took half the summer off and so i am going to pick up and reach out to more people i respect or i think that i uh, need to see it because most people hear about it and and they've maybe looked at it but do they really understand the predictability of the numbers right and yeah. so uh i think I, I think even if it slows down to 18 percent, still be well over a million and if you're making that type of rev share money on top of building your real estate business you have a moral responsibility to take this and, and spend time and break this down. And, and it just isn't like moving licenses. The people I'm speaking with, they're moving businesses and it just doesn't happen overnight. I know Mount Smith's on here. He walked away from 97 listings in yards and that were already stamped in the yard to be able to take a shot uh, 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 with me. But it's invaluable for him to be able to reach out to me when he's having growth problems with his, his team or whatever. And, and all I can do is because he hit me up uh, uh, last week or whatever. He's like, I've been coaching with somebody, an industry coach, paying them thousands of dollars a, a month. 
And he's like, I get more insight from you as a partner when I speak with them. And so he's like, let's just, let me just coach with you. Cause we've been partners and we just talk and we keep it moving. And so I was like, let's look at your problems and we're just going to break it down and start rebuilding from the ground up. And he's like, this is exactly what I needed or other partners that are doing 300 units, you know, uh, uh, two, 200 units. When they call me with problems out of the blue, I'm like, okay, let me think when I was at that level, here's how we solved it. Right. And so you can share your experiences. If you've already moved through the Mario stages, like a video game, you mm-hmm. know, where the cheat codes are at, or, you know, where you, you know, you just, you just, you just know how to navigate through the level. And that's invaluable to partner with people like that. And that's why I love seeing all of the people like, um, you know, there's, there's, I, I just don't want to throw any names out, but there's a lot of talent coming to EXP and they're going to be able to help change other people's lives because it's not just about their rev share, but okay, that's where it starts. But how can we sell more homes, be more efficient, help our agents gain more financial freedom? Because for me, this was even, even at select, it worked for me and it worked for a, another guy and a couple of our partners, but it really didn't work for our agents. Right. And if you can give them ownerships, you know, stock and an exit strategy, and they have an opportunity to take a shot at rev share. You, you, you need to pick up that phone and call that agent that you ha- are friends with, or you, you've helped in the past or whatever, and show it to them if you have real results. And you and, but make sure you're coming from a place of um, sincerity and you're genuine and you're going to help them and you're going to pull them up. I remember uh, Brent, when we were onboarding people so fast, he's like, dude, like, I hope you're like helping all these people. And I said, what we're doing I got my old operations guy back with me that ran select. I got Mark, the guy that ran our coaching company now back with me. And so we're taking the people and the systems of how we ran the team and we're taking it to the network and we're scaling it. The reason you uh, pay your rainmaker, or your team leader so much in splits is because they got high value. You trust them on how they're spending money, um, the systems that they're putting in place and all that stuff. So you have a balanced life and you're efficient, right? And I'm doing the same thing with the network. Like I'm taking those same principles and implementing them on a much larger scale to be able to help our partners scale up and grow as well. Not just through RevShare, but also selling a shit ton of real estate because that's what we do. And that's all I've ever known. Like, I, I mean, I, I almost want to hop back in and compete here in Wichita when my non-compete was up. And my operations guy's like, have you seen the predictions to how fast you're growing? Just calm down, keep helping your partners, stay in your lane and stay a servant. Like, Man, okay, I'll stay yeah. in my lane. Listen to the phone guy. Listen to the phone guy telling people to pick up the phone. Yeah, brother. Absolutely. I mean, I, I get it. Listen, I, I think that definitely is a, an important component, especially when you feel like you, 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 you built relationships with folks who uh, may not have heard about EXP or, or just would be curious or folks that you really care about. That you think need to know about it. But you definitely that's a piece of it. And, you know, I, you know, you and I both built businesses uh, predicated on, on prospecting. And certainly the attraction piece is nice, right? That's that's where we don't necessarily have to pick up the phone. Uh, but you're right; it's it's no different than than building uh, the perfectly balanced real estate business, where you know you know a piece of it is re- represented by your SOI, and then a piece of it is represented by you know your the, the your own uh, lead generation. So, dude, oh, you can't right. run it. You can't you can't run a predictable business without talking to people. No, that's right, man. Yeah, you can't you can't scale a you can't scale a repeat and referral business, man. We 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 definitely know yeah. that. So tell me yeah, this, man. Yeah. So your your conversations today look like what? When you're talking to somebody about EXP, what what do those conversations look like for you? I mean, I have a core process I put people through. I mean, when I first moved over to EXP, I was trying to over explain it myself and it was just too much. And so I had to come up with a core process and I got to go to Tony Jerry's house. I know our line, uh, depending on what line you're in, uh, I think we pay that guy a bunch of money to be able to coach with him. And so I got invited down to Dallas. I saw all the big hitters at that time, like the guy that brought you in. And I mean, it was who's who, uh, you know, about five, six months ago in EXP. And we got to spend a whole day in that dude's mansion. And, uh, and when I kept listening to Rob and and Tony and, and a bunch of other people and seeing what what's working, I'm like, man, I I already know this. Like, you can't just try to tell everybody everything over the phone if you're a buyer agent. You just try to set the appointment, and then you try to go through a buyer consultation, right? Then you and then move on to the next step. Same thing with uh, listings. And so I just think I was a little too over excited when I launched and. Um, fully didn't understand how to articulate EXP. I understood the financials and I knew why I moved, right? And so I had to, um, um, people, 
And so I learned more about their business and they're like, tell me about EXP. I called you. You've been on the phone with you 45 minutes. I said, you know what? Here's, here's some problems I see with your business. And then I give them feedback like I would do with a coaching client or something like that. And I said, you know what? I got to hop on another call, but um, can you promise me two things? They're like, what? I'm like, I'm going to send you this video and I don't send it to everyone. Okay. Um, and, and can you promise me that you're going to watch it? And, and they're like, yes. I'm like, what time? Because I'm going to put you on my calendar because the second commitment that I'm going to ask for is you just give me a call back. And you give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. But when you also call me back, I want you to think about some of the things I broke down uh, to you about your business and how I can help you. And they're like, and I'm like, can, can you know, I ask, can, can I get you to make those two small commitments? And they're like, without a doubt. So I don't get an EXP. I learn a lot th about their business. It's almost like an intake form. I give them suggestions or challenge some of their blind spots or limiting beliefs. And then I also will slide in some aha moments for them. They call me back. They tell me that it's a thumbs up or a thumbs down or where they're skeptical. And then we kind of reverse engineer off that. And in my early stages, I used to bring Jeff Willems in. I used to bring Brent Gove in and I would listen to how they positioned the XP and I just shut my mouth and um, I would just humble myself and I just learned a lot from them. And as I've got better, um, I can now handle my own conversations with articulating EXP, the financials. Plus, I have enough data where I can screen share with them. And like I just told you some numbers, I can show people how I got there, where I'm going and then how I can help, you know, uh, uh, solve some constraints with their business to be able to help them exponentially take off and explode. And so it's just uh, it's just that core process. And it's. Um, it's probably anywhere between a three to four step process. And if you're going to move actually teams, it's taken 60 to 90 days per personally with me and with agents it's taken 60, 30 to 60 days because you can't rush this. You really got to make sure that this is a right, it's just not because you want somebody else on your front line or you're just trying to make some rev share because as fast as they come in, will be as fast as they go. This has to be long-term uh, strategic partnership. That's great, man. So you've you've got it down to a science, got an onboarding process and everything. So let me right. ask you this. You, you talked about like what what you shouldn't do in terms of and I know there's a lot of EXP folks watching this and that will listen to this. But you talked about like what you shouldn't do. Give, give me three things or two things or one thing that you should not do when you're when you're talking about EXP or when you're trying to you, you, when you're trying to, you know, educate folks. Don't talk about rev share up front. I mean, I, rev share is the last thing you should talk about. If you're trying to pitch people to get in business with you, um, forget EXP to get in business with you and partner with you. And that's your only thing. Cause I mean, I, I made that mistake early on cause I knew why I was here, but I talked about this when I was in Vegas with, um, here's what I found out even when people start partnering with me, people come to EXP for a bunch of different reasons. Some people are here for stock. Some people's here for technology. Some people's here for the lead generation. Some people's here for the leadership. Some people are here to be able to help me work um, with the systems within their business. Some people are here for, for just a bunch of different reasons. And you have to be able to actively listen and remove what you want out of this situation and focus on what they want and then hone in on that. And I see so many people trying to slide into people's DMs and talk about rev share and just, just stop. I mean, so that, that would be number one. And, um, you know, number, number two is a video is not going to sell somebody on EXP. I know I talked about that with my core process and I have a few agents and I mean, hundreds of agents right now. And they're like, I'm sitting the video out. And it's like, Okay, are you helping understand their business and what does your business look like? Like, let's focus on your business before you go off and start trying to attract other agents because there's no way I'd be on track to have 500 agents if I didn't have built a healthy business before and and currently building another healthy business. And so it goes back to it goes back to don't try to attract people into this business until you can build a good business, right? And and uh, number three, um, <laughs> let's see. Well, so number three, what not to do? Um, don't get in arguments with KW on social media. Like I see that going on. <laughs> I, I, I've, been, I've been I've been independent my whole life, and I just think it's funny. Like I, I watch that, and some people are like, "Hey, you're in this group," and they tag me, and they're like, "Adam," because I, you know, I've you know I've been pretty active over the years with in the groups and stuff like that, and I've throttled off of it, and I'm like, "Let it go," because people are gonna hate and bash and fear 
what they don't understand. And you're not going to be able to articulate that on a thread. I'm sorry. And so quit, quit arguing, quit trying to stand up for EXP or yourself. Let it go. Like, you know, the truth, you know why you're here, right? Like, like go change somebody else's life. Get off Facebook. Go build your business. Go find somebody that you can like help help them and and and, and pull them in versus arguing with. I'm not. I don't want to say idiots, but I just think the whole conversation is um, um, dumb on both sides of the aisle. So no, do I could that. not agree more. I I, I couldn't agree more. Listen, I I came over. My our team came over from Keller Williams, and certainly, right. um, it was a it was it was kind of a nasty divorce. But um, we we don't have any bad blood for Keller Williams. I, I still think Keller Williams is a great company. We just know at this point we found a better model, not only for 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 me, but also for my team. And and I know that when you talk about sustainability long term. Um, and you talk about being able to change people's lives with, you know, revenue share, um, stock, and then, you know, all the technology, just everything that, you know, Glenn's built and, and that we have available to us. Listen, I mean, it, 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 there's really not an argument. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know what, I don't know what Keller Williams would even say would be the argument. And I appreciate mm -hmm. those guys and love them. But at the end of the day, I mean, this is, it's just a better model, man. It's just a better model. It's a until somebody um, has enough data, like, you know, I do now, like I broke this down to, uh, I got a team, uh, I'll keep her name anonymous. She has a team and four uh, branches, four teams out in California. And when I hit her up, you know, she's wanted to, to a coach with me before and we're around the same age. We follow each other. I like her moves and I know she's focused on expansion. Like I was, we had some in common. And when I first hit her up, it was emotional. Right. And, and there wasn't enough data there to deal with a logical business owner to move their business. And then when I had enough data, I went back to her and I'm like, look, I have enough data. Let me break this down to you where it's a predictable business now. And, and so her and I spent an hour and 90 minutes together. She's co probably coming to econ and she's going to move her whole business over now. And so it's like, you know, the old saying when the teacher or when the student's ready, the teacher will appear when these people are ready for, you know, for a breakthrough, if you will, or they have that constraint in their business and they can't solve it with their current brokerage. Like I'm telling you, like EXP didn't come to me. I don't care if it was called. I'm here because it solved my problem for me to level up and get to the next level. Like when you said we sold 125 homes the first part of September, like that's amazing to me because the old way I was doing it, that's about like 90 to 100 homes a month is what we're doing. I want to try to sell. Um, a thousand homes and get rev share off that in one month like that. I mean, I'm just changing my perspective in the game and, and understanding the the economics of scaling with uh, with the finances of this. And so yeah. it's it's just when you're ready when you're ready for for the message, um, they'll, uh, they'll they'll be more receptive to it. You can't sell people on this idea. You have to find people that's seeking a better way and really make sure you can articulate it and break it down to them. And that starts with leadership and above average communication and proven results. Yeah, for sure, man. All right. Well, brother, we're, we're coming like to the end here. I got a couple more questions for you um, and then we'll break away here. But what, what I want to, I want to ask you, man, because I asked this to everybody and everybody gives a different answer, but like, so mm -hmm. we'll probably have hundreds, maybe thousands of people listen to this and watch this. Tell me, like, what do you say to that agent who is who's listening to this or watching this and they're thinking mm -hmm. about moving mm -hmm. to EXP mm -hmm. um, and they or they just want to find out more about it? Like, what do you say to that person? Like, what does Adam Bailey mm -hmm. say to that person? Man, that's that's kind of tricky, man, because right now everybody's trying to shop out, out value. Right. Which lines better? Which partnerships better? Um, all, all, all I'm going to say is it's not what you tell that person, it's how ethical you are. And, and just let them know, like, you know, um, don't try to shop out value, just be authentic with, you know, helping them with, with where they're at in their biz business, but let them know you're going to be as ethical as possible through that process. I've had people come back to me and say, oh, other people were bad mouth than so-and-so I talked to, or they're saying they have more value, or I get this for free. And they call me back and say, hey, I'm going to join you because you didn't do any of that. Like you were genuinely interested in my business. You didn't, you know, even when I told you I was talking to XYZ, I didn't panic or try to, 
you know, pull a slime bag move or anything like that. And so I'm just up front with them, like what they could experience and what they should look for. And, um, and so if they're shopping out value and, and they're, they're, they're not going to be a right partner for me anyways. And so yeah. I, it's just, uh, I tell them like, go talk to as many people as possible. That's what I did. I mean, somebody didn't come to me and talk to me. And then all of a sudden I was like, yeah, this is the greatest thing. Like, I mean, the person that talked to me, I mean, is uh, in your line. I mean, I should have been whatever. And so I just had to vet out. Um, I just had to vet out everybody's story and figure out whose business was more like minded uh, of, of, of my business and where I wanted it to go. And that's who I wanted to partner with. So, um, you know, it's kind of tricky, man, because that's a I, I can see why you're getting different answers on that now. You know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah, what, yeah, yeah. what do you tell that person? What do you tell that person that says I'm shopping you out or I'm talking to everybody? Do your due diligence, do your research. And then, I mean, leaders rise to the top. I mean, you, you know, whoever's going to be able to break this down and whoever can get you to see it and there's chemistry there and, and you feel like you're a good fit, you know, and they're going to help you, go for it. Yeah. Lots, and, and here, lots of people. He, 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 Here's two things I know people will get if they contact you is, and that's authenticity and value. And, and brother, that's why I appreciate you being on here and sharing your story. Hey, let me ask passion, you this. Passion, my friend. Passion, passion. Passion, baby. Passion. That's what it's all about. No, how do people, if somebody wants to reach out to you and, and, and they want to find out more about you, uh, mm -hmm. about, about maybe more about learning about how their business is broken and, and maybe how you could help mm -hmm. them out, or if they want to find out more about mm -hmm. EXP, right? How do people connect with you? Um, just DM me. I mean, right now, uh, I, I mean, I, uh, I have a lot of direct mess message conversations or you can go over to inside sales experts, uh, private group. I run past coaching clients in there, past teammates, people that's followed me for a while. There's like 4,000 people in there. We drop videos or drop content in there. I've been lacking the last uh, four months or so because we're just going so fast. But now I got Mark, uh, director of coaching and and, uh, you know, so hopefully we're going to get back to adding value. So I'll just go in there and suck up as much free stuff as we can pump out. Or if you got questions for myself, just DM me. Um, and for, for you, man, I know you used to follow me for a while. Um, a lot of people see me as an ISA guy. I had an ISA company to run, so I had to stay in that lane with that content. But hopefully I didn't let you down and uh, it was a good interview today. So I appreciate Absolutely, having me brother. on and uh, you felt, felt the passion, man. Dude, it was it was everything I thought it would be. And I so appreciate it, man. I'm, I'm glad that we had an opportunity to connect today. I cannot wait to connect with you in New Orleans, too. I'm fun to have I'm fun to have beers with uh, because people are like, man, you're the same way in person as you are online. But you know what I like? I've been using like Wirecast. I use some other uh, programs that be live. But what I like about this is I can't see the comments, so it doesn't distract me or get my ADD bacon <laughs> different ways. I'm not, I, I know I know you can, but I appreciate that. Like I'm like, man, I like just being able to look at Mike and have a conversation versus all the comments coming in. So I'm sure I'll go back. Benefield's and, and been beating you doing. up, man. Benefield's been beating you up the whole time. Uh, he's a joker, man. I love that guy. I'm just kidding, man. That. He's not. He's he's been he's been very tame, man. He's been very tame. But uh, brother, listen, hey. I will definitely, I will have a beer with you uh, at, at EXP Con. I can't wait to, to connect with you there in October, man. And listen, uh, don't be a stranger, man. And if you ever need anything, let me know. And I can't wait to, I uh, can't wait to see you then. All right. Appreciate you guys. Just do it. Later. All right, brother. Yep. We out, man. That was good.